So I'm going to go in and get into configuration mode and I'm going to specify login local. So now when a user logs in via the VTY lines, they're going to need to provide authentication, which will refer to the local uh, username password database, which in this case includes only one user, which should be Packet Lab. Come on, baby. Which includes just the username Packet Lab with privilege level 15. So we're good to go here. I'm going to write this. So now let's try this again. And I'm leaving up the terminal emulation session in the background because I want to see want to show you that this does actually go in and do some configuration okay see it's connecting and you can see it's been configured from the console by packet lab on VTY line 0 so somebody has logged in with the credentials packet lab packet lab and they made a configuration change and they have made another so that's the uh, SDM setup making these changes Okay, we're back and it's asking us what we want to install in there. So obviously the changes that were made on this router were not just copying over files because it hasn't begun to do that yet. Let me see if I can suss out what they were. It's going to do a show archive config differences. It takes a while to think, so I'm going to pause again. And what this command does is it, um, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail. There's a uh, video out there for this command, but it's going to show you the difference between the running configuration and the startup configuration. And it looks like what it did was it just regenerated it. It made a new certificate. So we had one on there already, but it went in, and made sure, and created a new certificate. Let me bring back my SDM installation. So here you can go typical and just hit next. I like to go custom, custom. I like to go custom because what I want to look at is how much space is available. And I was afraid of this. <laughs> okay. So here, if I was to install the full Cisco SDM on here, it would take up 8 megs and I don't have 8 megs available if I install SDM Express which is a smaller version of this it would take up 2.4 megs and I have that space on here what had happened was this stupid router do show flash I deleted all this stuff this is where it thrown on there I deleted it unfortunately it has not completely removed it from the flash I'd have to do a squeeze for that and as you can see it's not allowing me to do this. So I currently don't have sufficient space on here because I had loaded this stuff on then deleted it and it's like eight or nine megs and it's eating up that space. Through the magic of pausing, uh, I have gone and I have cleared out the flash. I have to fix this stupid router. So anyways, now we should have sufficient space on there. Let's bring this guy back up and let me see if it recognizes, it doesn't recognize, I'm gonna go back. I might have to start this all again. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna pause again. So I went and re-ran the whole thing. Just started again. Yeah, I planned that, that's what it was. It was a good lesson to show you that you're gonna to wanna to see how much space you have available on your flash. So now we can see I've got 19 megs available. Full SDM takes about eight megs. You can install the SDM Express, and as we saw, that only takes about 2.5 megs. It would have been interesting to install this and see what the difference is, but not interesting enough that I wanted to waste any more time doing it. So I just throw them both on, what the hell. I've got space to spare now. And then it's going to say, are you sure you want to do this? You want to install this or do you want to chicken out? We're going to install and this will take a bit of time. So once again, I will pause. All right, and here we are. We finally have completed the installation. Just wanted to show real quick, show flash, not show slash, we don't need to see guns and roses. All these files are the files that SDM um, installed and we can do a show, or I'm sorry not show dir, it's just dir. It's a directory, it'll show you the, the times, or it generally does, it doesn't have any date. Oh, no, I don't know why there was no date on there, that's weird, generally they do usually has a, a timestamp on there. Oh well. Anyways, you can uh, take my word for it. You can rewind the video and show that only that iOS image is on there. So now we have the SDM files on there. You can do this two ways. Let me bring this guy back up. We can launch SDM from here. Basically all this is going to do is it's going to open HTTPS and then um, the IP address of the router, in this case 10.100.100.1 in your default browser. So we'll, we'll do that, but like I said, going forward you'll have to quote unquote manually specify the URL in your browser. So I'm going to click finish and since this is going to, oh I just got to let it accept the certificate. 
and it's going to prompt me for a username and password. And I'm going to hit OK. And I don't care if Firefox knows this or not. I'm probably going to have to stop here because there's not going to be enough room on the screen for what I'm currently recording. Actually, I'm going to, well, this is going to come up. Let me pause for a second. Okay, so it does neatly fit on there. You can see that I'm running Firefox 358 and Java is enabled. I am actually going to pause now because it's going to bring up this other window, which will not fit within the recording screen, so I'll be right back. Well, I think I mentioned this in the slides as well. The first time I ran this, Firefox froze up and actually died. It hasn't completely died yet, but it looks like it's good and frozen, so I'm going to pause again and I'm just going to launch Firefox and manually specify the URL. Okay, when I close that out, it did kill out my Firefox. Okay, thinking, thinking, thinking. Here's one of those uh, applets. Let's go ahead and hit yes. I'm sorry if you're not seeing all this. It's not letting me pull it up. It says do not close the screen. Okay, that seemed to take forever. Ah, uh, here we go. It's saying host name mismatch. That's because the name of my router is not the IP address. So go ahead and hit yes. It's going to ask me again for authentication credentials. Let's hope that this does it. And yet another pop-up. Come on, baby. There we go. We know we're in the home stretch and we see this. It's loading up. I guess I will pause briefly. And it paused for about 30 seconds to a minute. I don't know how long it was. So here we are. This is the same thing that we saw before, except now the software is actually running from the uh, router rather than from my PC. Let's see, figure monitor. And it's a little bit slower. So it's not as snappy as having it on your computer itself and it takes a while to load. So unless you have a really good reason, I wouldn't run this on the uh, router. And you can see the CPU utilization is at 65%. I think that's higher than it should be, especially since uh, not a lot going on there. Anywho, let me go ahead and get out of this. So we've seen, you know, installing SDM. We've seen running it from your local PC, and we've seen installing it and running it from the router itself. Uh, like I said, unless you have a, a, a good reason not to run it from your PC, I would run it from the PC. If you're running a different OS, if you're running um, Linux or uh, Mac OS or something like that, you can definitely give it a shot by running it on the router and then uh, just getting to it via a browser. Your mileage may vary. Uh, I, technically, you should be able to do it with Firefox. I'm not going to speak to Mac OS. I don't use Macs. I tried this with Ubuntu. I got to uh, a couple screens before it launches and it just froze up. Technically, you should be able to run it from Ubuntu in Firefox as long as it's running Java, but I wasn't able to completely verify that, so you're on your own with that. So that's the uh, nuts and bolts of installing Cisco Security uh, Device Manager. It's pretty straightforward. The biggest problems are going to come with the interactions between the three pieces of software, um, Windows, Internet Explorer, and Java. Uh, that's probably where 90% of your issues are going to lie. So it's pretty straightforward. You just need to be aware that you're going to need to configure your router to allow SDM to manage it. If you want to run it locally, you have to make sure that Java firewall and browser settings are adjusted. You also need to be running Windows. If you're going to be running it from a router, you have to make sure that you have sufficient storage on the router, which we saw that we didn't, to install the files. And you're also going to have to take a performance hit because it's going to be slower to launch initially. It's a little bit slower when you're actually working within SDM. And it's also going to, it looks like, uh, increase the CPU on your router. So unless you have a real good reason for running it from the router, I would run it local. Uh, I'll say it one more time. I did try this with Ubuntu, and I was not able to get it running. When I say I tried it with Ubuntu, I was running it from the router and using Firefox. I didn't do a whole lot more troubleshooting on that, so it's technically possible and probably will work. So that might be a situation where you do want to run it from the router. But anyways, uh, thanks for joining me in the Packet Lab. Hope to see you again.